If you're a creative professional, you're definitely in the right place and I'm glad you're here. I'm going to save you a lot of heartache and frustration when deciding between the Spectre X360 and the Spectre X360. You see, there is one that is made just for you and one for the other guy or gal, and the most overwhelming part is they look exactly the same. So which one's right for you as a creator, whether you're a designer, photo editor, video editor? Let's get into it. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. Now, if you're curious about the exact availability or pricing of either of these models, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, as I pull each of these laptops out of the box, there is no visible difference between the two, as I mentioned. They both come in a beautiful graphite gray with gold trim and beveled edges. This is one of the most regal laptops I have ever had the pleasure of reviewing in my studio. Both of these laptops weigh the same, have the same ports, keyboard, trackpad, excellent two-in-one convertible pen capabilities, and matte gray finish. However, there are a few important differences that set these two laptops apart and will make a big difference to you depending on your use case as a creative. So without any more waiting, let's get into the reason you're here, and that's to make sure you make the right decision when choosing a Spectre X360. I won't drone on about all of the in-depth details of the laptop in this video. If you want my in-depth review of each one of these laptops, you can check it out in the YouTube cards above once those are available. The first major difference between the two laptops in my studio is the color gamut range. They both come with 4K touch enabled 60 hertz refresh rate screens, but the model with the 11th gen Intel i7 1165G7 reaches 340 nits at full brightness with a color gamut range of 97% sRGB, 77% Adobe RGB, and 79% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E color accuracy of 1.37 not too shabby. On the other hand, the model with the i7-10750H is an OLED 4K screen, can reach 400 nits at full brightness, has a color gamut range of 100% sRGB, 99% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at an average Delta E color accuracy of 1.74. Now, the bigger confusion, or if you do your research, lack of confusion, comes on HP's online store. If you look at the customization sheet, when you're preparing to purchase your laptop, you'll see multiple screen options available to you at different price points. And if you wanna follow along with me, you can head down in the description below, click that link and start to customize your own laptop. One of the options uh, is for 340 nits, and two of the options are at 400 nits. If you want, a 100% sRGB, 99% uh, Adobe RGB, then you'll want to snag the OLED 4K option, okay? If you believe that 97% sRGB is suitable for you, uh, then you can work with the 340 nits or even the 400 nit screen non-OLED version. All right, so that'll help, you know, kind of clear up some of that confusion when you're placing your order if you decide to make a purchase. Now, if you're enjoying this video and getting some value, gently press ever so gently press down that like button and let me know in the comment section how you plan on using this laptop. I'm really curious if we've got a lot of video editors, digital artists, graphic designers, photo editors, who's deciding to pick up this laptop. Now, if you don't wanna miss any of my future uploads and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of those. Now, really the big question is, what's the differences in performance? Because as we see, according to the HP website, you can get that color accuracy. It just depends on the screen choice that you make. So that's what you wanna verify to make sure you get the right color accuracy. Now, the second major area to be aware of when purchasing the Spectre X360, as I just mentioned, is the components your model is outfitted with. There is roughly a $150 difference between each model. Depending on your workflow, that $150 could make or break your workflow depending on your needs. The first Spectre X360 comes with the Intel 10th gen Core i7-10750H with six cores and 12 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti Max-Q, and 16 gigs of RAM plus 512 gig SSD. The second and slightly less expensive model comes with the i7-1165G7 with four cores and eight threads and integrated Intel Iris Xe graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gig SSD. The first model mentioned is the more expensive and more capable laptop. It comes with an H series processor and dedicated GPU. This laptop is well suited for designers, artists, 4K editors, and some light 3D modeling. The second model mentioned is still a powerful laptop, but I will have to exclude the use case of 4K video editing. I will recommend 1080p as the most use for this laptop as um, it will be able to handle that smoothly and frustration free. And 3D modeling, 
Gonna have to exclude that, as you'll see in the benchmarks coming up. It just really doesn't stand up to the challenge, and I'll show you those benchmarks and we'll talk through that. It simply does not have the power I want to see in order to handle these two tasks with excellence. The laptop comes with a G-series processor and integrated graphics. The G-series processor from Intel are great for productivity and design photo and art oriented tasks. Now, if you want to get an in-depth dive on all of the, you know, Ryzen and Intel processors, what their numbering system means and what each CPU is capable of, then I would highly recommend that you watch uh, the video I recently put out um, or eh, been a month or so now, um, but I recently put out a video and you can check out the numbering system and letters and what that all means. And I'll link that up in the YouTube cards above for you. If you want to check that out after this video is finished, let's put these two laptops through some simulated benchmarking tools. And when we look at some real world tech tests, such as Photoshop and Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve. Um, at that point, I'll show you how these two models can handle those tasks as well, um, so you know which one you need to perform the tasks that you're going to be conducting. In Geekbench Single Core, the newer 11th Gen i7 1165G7 is outpacing the slightly older i7 10750H by more than 200 points. Intel has made some new updates to the AI inside of their CPUs, allowing them to pull more power from a lower thermal design. The i7 1165G7 scored a 1521, and the i7 10750h scored at 1292 both solid scores and near the top of the charts but as you see the uh, newer xe model outpaced it moving into the 3d modeling benchmarks let's take a look at how cinebench r20 is handled once again the newer 11th gen cpu beats out the older h series processor um, the 1165 G7 has an integrated graphics within the CPU, giving it a slight advantage uh, on this benchmark test. But once we get into the real world tests, uh, we will very well may see uh, a different story. So we'll check that out in just a second or a minute. Let's kick off the real world test by starting in Photoshop. It was just a second. It didn't take a minute. I use these lap. Uh, I use this benchmark test to see how well each of these laptops can handle the most intensive design uh, tool inside of Adobe's design suite. If a laptop can perform well in Photoshop, it will handle InDesign and Illustrator with ease. In Photoshop benchmark, the uh, i7 1165G7 fooled me and pulled slightly ahead of the i7 10750H model. I did not expect this. So right off the bat, if you want more power inside of Photoshop, I would pick up the more affordable i7 1165 g7 version of the hp specter x360 as you can see the i7 1165 g7 scored a 623 over the i7 10750 with its 601 not a huge gap but definitely increased a little performance now if you're curious about really like an in-depth comparison of these two processors with like photoshop tasks and all that i'll link a video up in the youtube cards above and you can check that out now, both laptops are definitely strong contenders if you're looking for a Photoshop laptop. You can also use this reference if you are considering other design or photography focused software such as Affinity, Photo, Sketch, and uh, Figma. Now that we know these laptops can handle the Adobe Design Suite, let's check out how they can handle motion design inside of After Effects. Now, inside of After Effects, my inklings were confirmed as the H-series processor and dedicated GPU helped pull the pricier model ahead in the more intensive motion design program. The i7-10750 model scored a 722 in After Effects over the i7-1165G7 scoring a 656. Not a massive gap, but definitely an improved score for the dedicated GPU and H-series processor. Surprisingly, on the render test, the gap was closed quite a bit between the two models with the i7-1065 sorry, the i7-10750H scoring a 477 and the i7-1165G7 with a 445. Overall, if you're considering this laptop for After Effects, I would choose the i7-10750 model. As requested, here are the 3D modeling benchmarks. Do note that when I read these off, we're gonna be presenting the 10750H first, um, and then we will be presenting the 1165G7. For Autodesk 3ds Max, we had an 81.28, followed up by a 30.21. For Autodesk, Maya, we had a 97.21, followed up by an 8.27. For PTC Creo, we saw a 71.52, followed up by a 10.36. For SolidWorks, we saw a 47.97, followed up by a 15.86. As you can see, the dedicated GPU and i7-10750H kicked the pants off of the i7-1165G7 and its integrated graphics. But if you look at some of the other models on the chart, the Spectre X360 is not one of the best 3D modeling laptops. So if you really wanna get into 3D modeling, I would choose something like the HP ZBook G7 or the HP Omen if you wanna stick with an HP laptop. Now onto my favorite portion of the benchmark test, video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm gonna take a nine minute 4K clip, add some motion graphics, and then play it back in the timeline at full quality. This clip 
contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. During this test, the i7-1165G7 model saw drop frame rates as follows. Full quality, it dropped 11,907 frames out of the 16,177. Half quality, 755, and fourth quality, two. The i7-10750 model saw drop frame rates as follows. At full quality, 1,585 out of the 16,177. At half quality, zero, and at fourth quality, zero. I was running this test with only Premiere Pro open, so I will say that if you start multitasking on, uh, on your laptop while editing, you may see it's more dropped frames um, at full quality, but you can easily drop down to half or fourth quality to continue to get a smooth uh, editing experience. Now, regarding playback, once again, the more powerful dedicated GPU pairs nicely with the H-series processor um, in the 10750H model. It will give you a much smoother playback experience while video editing. And regarding DaVinci Resolve, both actually play back rather smoothly due to the better proxy settings that DaVinci Resolve offers. So regarding playback and resolve, both will work well, but in Premiere Pro, I would recommend the i7-10750 model with a dedicated GPU. To render out the 7,240 motion design frames in that project took the i7-1165 G7 12 minutes and 9 seconds, and the i7-10750H 4 minutes and 16 seconds. Moving on to the 4K export test, I'm going to take a 9-minute 4K clip, place it in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, I'm using the free version of DaVinci Resolve here, so keep that in mind. Then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. The i7-10750H uh, Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export took three minutes and 52 seconds, and the 1165G7 took 10 minutes and eight seconds. The i7-10750 Premiere Pro 4K to 1080p export took four minutes and 46 seconds, and Premiere Pro 4K to 4 4K to 1080p in the 1165G7 took 15 minutes and 47 seconds. Now, DaVinci Resolve 10750H 4K to 4K took 19 minutes and 47 seconds, and the 1165G7 4K to 4K took 28 minutes and 21 seconds. The i7-10750 DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p took 8 minutes and 1 second, and the 1165G7 DaVinci Resolve 4K to, 4K to 1080p, excuse me, took 13 minutes and 47 seconds. So if you're someone wanting to conduct video edits, work on motion design and 3D modeling, then the i7-10750 model will be the right model for you. It will also work very well in Adobe's design suite within photo editing tools. Um, but if the, you know, with the i7-1165G7, it performs slightly better in the Photoshop task to my surprise. So with that said, let's see which laptop runs cooler and quieter. So at idle, the i7-10750H model had no fan noise, same as the 1165G7. At web browsing, they both um, had about 32 decibels of fan noise. Now during the Photoshop test, the i7-10750H model had 47 decibels of fan noise, and the 1165G7 had about 49 decibels of fan noise at the peak. Now they didn't just sit there the whole time, that was kind of their peak fan noise during some of the tasks. Now for the Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export, the i7-10750H was about 43 decibels, and the 1165G7 was about 37 decibels. So if you want a quieter laptop, I would lean towards the 1165G7. For DaVinci Resolve, the uh, 10750H had about 40 decibels and the 1165G7 had 44 decibels. So there it was a little bit higher. So we got a little bit of variety here in these laptops. So both laptops ran fairly quiet compared to a lot of laptops, um, uh, this type of performance that I've had on my channel. Um, so now that we've looked at that, let's see how well um, these two laptops did cooling the components inside of their systems. If you're looking for a highly color accurate laptop with the performance you need in Photoshop and similar design tools, but don't anticipate doing any video editing, motion design, or 3D modeling, then I'll pick up the Spectre X360 with its i7 1165G7. You could upgrade the screen if you wanted to the OLED version to get even more color accuracy, but as you saw, the non-OLED version still had solid color accuracy. But if you want all that performance and more so that you can work on video edits, 3D modeling, and motion design, then I'll make sure to pick up the i7-10750H model with its dedicated GPU. Oh, and if you want the color accuracy, make sure, like I mentioned, to pick up the 4K OLED screen model. Now, if you're curious about the exact uh, pricing and availability of either of these models, you can head down in the description below, click one of those links, and if you do make a purchase, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want more videos about the Spectre X360s, you can click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep creating, keep designing. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.